All right. So we've got a lot of prep first. So I, I wrote the broad steps off the top of my head. If I make an error, I'll apologize now for it. Your first step is to collect and prep your equipment. That does not mean establish your sterile field because the rules of sterile field, if we do it now, if we create and establish that sterile field now, eventually I'm going to be turning my back on the sterile field and not paying attention to it. So um, at least collect all of these stuff that we need. So we'll need scissors. We need, we'll use this as medication. We need an ACE wrap. We need the gauze and um, the sterile wrap as well. Perfect. Everybody left this behind. Oh, all right. Perfect. So we'll collect all of those things. So you should have your stuff with you. And you want to take it out. And I collected a bunch of them. So if you don't have it in your little bag, then you let me know. All right. So collecting all of your things. Now, the next step will be, you know, we have a patient. So the scenario we're working on now is we have to perform some level of wound care. More common in the skilled nursing facilities for us, more common in home care, more common in outpatient, the hospital settings, it's a little unusual. We might participate. We might be holding a limb while someone else does the wound care. But for every single hospital, there's a wound clinic, wound center that they use. So the patients get wheeled down to them and then they get wheeled back to the floors. Where in the skilled nursing facility, home care and uh, outpatient, it is on us. And especially you as a PTA, it can happen. Uh, so... This is what we're going to start doing is start thinking about how do we perform wound care? How do we best protect the patient? What are the steps we need to consider? And what are some of the basic skills we have to have? So our scenario is the patient has a wound. We need to take down the dressing, measure the wound, and then redress it. Uh, take down the dressing, measure the wound, do something, whether it's cleaning, debriding, or adding medication, and then redress it. So... My next step with, when I'm with the patient is to don my non-sterile gloves to then take down the dressing. Now, our first rep, nobody, does anybody come in here with the wound all wrap that we want to play with? No, I didn't want to admit it if we did, right? Um, so our first rep is a little, we start kind of in the middle. So it's a little awkward, but once we get the flow of things, it'll start feeling good. So... I'm going to start in the middle as well. Can I have a, a leg or something that I could start work on? That all right? Can you hop up on the table there? Tape measure or sterile? Some, do we have any sterile tape measures or anything? The, the little plastic things? All right, just a regular tape measure. How far up do the pants go? They go past the knee. All right. All right. Well, good, good, good. That'll be good. All right. So our first step would be donning sterile, uh, non-sterile gloves. And then we would start taking down the dressing. Now, for us in here, we want to reuse everything. So we're going to take it down slightly differently than what was probably going to be at the clinic. Um, the top layer will be our ACE wraps. We'll remove that. We'll re-roll the ACE wraps as we're taking it off the patient. The next layer would be the sterile wrap for it. Most times with the patient, we would cut that off. So we would cut that off away from the wound. So her wound is on the lateral, kind of posterior lateral of the leg. Where do I want my scissors? Yeah, medial side, away from the wound, right? So based on our chart review, maybe talking with the patient, maybe personal history of the patient, we would know where that is. So I would cut away from that wound. Um, for our purposes, we're going to be unrolling and, and 
rewrapping with these just because we want to use them over and over again. All right. So I'm going to take that down. There's going to be gauze over the wound. I'm going to take that gauze off and make sure everything's disposed of. Now my gloves need to – now the, the wound is exposed. I have soiled gloves. Um, what I would then do is remove these gloves and start measuring as long as I can be non-contact with the patient. If I need to be in contact with the patient, what do you think I should do before I do all of that? Wash your hands. Yep, absolutely. And then what? Now I need to now I need to actually do the sterile feel and sterile process. So that's a that's a decision we have to make. So for now, I'm just going to show you quickly so we can start practicing this stuff and getting used to it. So then I would take the measuring device that I have, whether it's every goniometer on the sides, they have rulers too. So we can use a goniometer. Um, this packaging has the ruler on it as well. Uh, and there are some sterile devices or even one-time use devices that we could use. I'll pull up some pictures of some of the other ways we could potentially measure. The We need to measure the area, length, width, and depth, if possible. The depth we can measure, there are some sterile like tips with rulers on it if it is a really deep wound. If it is a deep wound, what stage pressure wound would those be? three or four good um so if it's stage three or four i can put you know the measuring device into the wound bed itself and get, and measure the depth that way if it's shallow enough where i can't get a good measure at least staging appropriately would be the way we would measure depth uh, but length and width at the widest and longest points would be the at least minimum Next step from there, I have to just look around at the wound itself, see if there's anything else that I'm concerned about. What am I concerned about with any wound? Infection, right? So um, on Thursday, when we learn more about this stuff, we'll dive into more details. My memory for this is C triple T me. So I haven't thought, I didn't look at my notes ahead of time, but I know what, I know the C triple T me. It's color. Texture, temperature, turgor, moisture, and edema. So I'm going to be looking at the wound and surrounding tissues for color. We'll dive into it more. We'll get all the nitpicky details Thursday. Broadly speaking, what should the color be? Be uniform. Whatever the, whatever the skin color is, proximal and distal to the wound should be around the wound itself. Maybe some pink edges if it's healing, that would be okay. But if it's any weird colors, we got a problem. Uh, temperature. So uh, here's the the um, little secret. Everything should be uniform. It should be uniform, proximal, distal, left, and right. So I'm going to be checking the temperature Proximal, distal, close to the wounds, not touching the wound, especially if I don't have sterile gloves on. Comparing it to the other side, it should be uniform. It shouldn't be hotter or colder. If it was hotter, what do you think that indicates? Infection, broadly speaking, it would indicate increased blood flow. So for some healing, that might be a good thing. If it's really out of whack, then infection. What about if it's cooler? Lacking blood flow, which now what are we concerned with? Not healing. So, yeah. So, good. So, looking at temperature next. Um, texture. Groove or uh, smooth or rough. Should be uniform. Shouldn't have any, like, patches that are really different than the other. Uh, turgor is the elasticity of the skin. Uh, and if we're really dehydrated, that can... That could cause uh, decreased elasticity in the skin. Uh, those are the T's, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You can do it on yourself right now. Everybody, not pinch. That's a terrible word choice for it. So we're going to gather the skin of the back of our hands. And once it's all puckered up, then let go. Now, most of us are just recoiling right away. Anybody know they're dehydrated right now? Anybody have too many cups of coffee? and From, the, from a long weekend, maybe? 
Um, if we're dehydrated, that skin can stay puckered up for about three seconds. Um, I have some patients where they, I come in, especially on those hot, humid days, and a lot of my patients don't have air conditioning, and they live on the third or fourth story apartment or, or um, where it's really hot. I do a quick turgor test, and that, that skin's going to stay puckered up for minutes. And I say, well, we don't have to worry about you feeling tired. We need water, like you're dehydrated. All right, so that's the turgor test. And we can do that anywhere. Uh, moisture and edema. Moisture is talking about the exudate. What kind of discharge are we getting? We can also look at the color of the discharge, but really it's the amount is, is the other thing. So not only the color and the, the thickness of it, but the amount of it as well. And then edema, how much swelling is there? So once we take down the dressing, my next steps are to measure and observe. Length and width and depth if able, C, triple T, me will be good enough. All right, that, we'll get into all the more details on Thursday, but that's the next step. All right, once we measured it, our next step is to create that sterile field. So I would remove my gloves in the appropriate way. And now I need to create my sterile field. Um, I'm going to have you... Somebody grab me a pillow real quick. Can you slide back just a hair? Thank you. Prop this up and we'll grab a pillow. Uh, yeah, one of those two. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to have it kind of like, yeah, I want as much of this exposed as I can. All right, perfect. All right, so so now I need to create my sterile field. So again, we need to create the sterile fields, one inch border around the edges, right? And now my rules of the sterile field are what? Don't turn your back on it. Don't leave it unattended. Know what's sterile and what's not and make sure we don't cross contaminate. So then, exactly. So I'm gonna put everything in the order. That's the next step to keep us organized. So my next steps are, again, if I, if I couldn't measure the wound Without sterile, that would be my next step. So my measurement tools would be next. And then I'm going to have my medication application after that. I'm going to open this up and plop it in. Good. Discard. I'm going to then wrap, put the gauze over it. Open this up. Plop it in. And then last is the sterile gauze. Open it up, pop it in. All right. So now I'm set up. And again, my measurement, if it was a sterile measuring device, I'd be there too. All right. I will also need this. I need this opened up because I need that to be accessible. I've already got, Tony was really nice to me. She already put my tape on the edges. You probably need to do that as well for the end. And then I'll have my non-sterile gauze that I'll need after that. All right. I am all set up. In this case, I already measured. Again, you might have to do that step once you put on your PPE. We need at, at minimum, uh, let's work on both gowns and sterile gloves for today. Um, no splash precautions or anything else like that. So we can ignore the um, ignore uh, goggles and face shields. I always think it's good practice to do everything. So to put on and off the mask, I think is an important step for us. So feel free to do that as well. Um, I think sometimes in school we need perfect reps and other times we need lots of reps. So I think the perfect reps include things like masking, maybe uh, uh, goggles and shield if you have them. The quick reps are, all right, we just got to work on this wrapping technique over and over again. So anyway. All right, I misplaced my gloves. So I will do this without gloves, uh, but you guys have them. So 
my next step, my gloves are on. All right, my sterile gloves have been donned carefully. My gown has been donned carefully. I look good. I'm sterile. Great. All right. My next step is to measure if I haven't done it. After that, I'm going to apply medication. So medication, I'm going to use my sterile. I'm going to dip it in, not touching any edges. I'm going to uh, apply it in one direction. I'll have to check the nose to see if it spe specifies proximal to distal, distal or proximal. Um, for now, I just want to do it in one direct. Whatever you're going to apply it in on the first time, apply it in the second time if you need to. So then I would apply it one swipe, discard. If I need another one, another swipe and discard. That'll be our cleaning and debriding process for now, um, just for today while we're getting these reps in. All right, then discard. Next up after that, I'm going to apply my sterile gauze. Good. Good enough like that. Okay. If it's a big wound, I can obviously do more. Next step after that is my sterile gauze. Now, what I want to do is I want to apply this to the patient where I'm going to start distal to the wound and work my way proximal. So, with this gauze, I'm really going to just capture the bottom half an inch or so with this first line. Um, I'm going to have you lift this up just, so, yeah, good. You okay right there? Now, I also want, when I'm unrolling, I want to be able to unroll on the patient that way. What I don't want is... I don't want to be here doing it because then I'm always working against myself. I want to be able to have the unroll. I want to be able to roll it across the patients. Okay. You guys see that difference? Okay. So I got another one. I got another one. All right. Flip that up real quick. Starting all over with it. I, I, I wish I didn't press that record button for all these mistakes. All right. So my first step, catch the distal about half an inch or so of the gauze. I want to roll it not too tight, but snug. And I want to avoid what we call uh, windows and wrinkles. Windows are gaps in between the each wrap. Wrinkles, why do I want to avoid wrinkles? Because wrinkles are going to create an area of high pressure and friction, and that's going to lead to more skin breakdown. You guys have all at some point had a wrinkle in your sock, right? So we don't want that. So once I get uh, one or so rolls, what I want to do with this technique, if I only do little semicircles, you can relax a little bit there. Be okay. Um, I run the risk of like this one wrap being tighter than the rest which would create uneven pressure. And now it, that could potentially act like a tourniquet, reducing blood flow rather than actually helping anything. So what I want to do after my first circle around, I want to do this weaving method where I'm going to create little figure eights. So I'm going to come up. And then down, and as I come around the backside, I'm going to go up the other direction. So I'm making these little figure eights or little X's across. And that's going to create a much more even distribution of pressure. There's not going to be a chance for any one, um, one rotation to be too taut. there put that there for now good 
Um, and it's a little tough to tell. Do you see where like all of these little points are? When it looks nice, it'll we'll be able to see a little better with this. But when you did a really nice job, all of your intersections of those X's are going to line up. It's going to take some practice for that. All right. Uh, next up, I take a look. Do I need to fix anything? Oh, here's a little wrinkle. Got to fix that. I'm unhappy with my first course. Got really loose over here. So I would look at that and go, you know what? I'm not going to live with that. I'm, I'm going to have to take this all the way down, right? So our last step before we do anything is take a look back, right? Just like with our positioning. Yes, you did the textbook correctly. Before you leave, take a look back and see if there's anything else you got to do. All right, from then, next up is the ace wrap, and all of the same rules apply. So get your starter course. Now I like to go about halfway overlapping the, the first course of this sterile gauze. So making sure we capture it all. After that first wrap is done, then I start doing my little X pattern. I want to overlap about a third of the bandage each time. All right, so from here, I finished just shy. I've got a little bit more um, of the sterile gauze here. I wouldn't want to let that sit. I would have to either get another gauze to finish this out or unwrap and see if I can get it. Or maybe I just need a, a longer version of this. Like I've got some decisions to make. But for this purpose, we'll leave it there for now. Then I can put whatever tape I need to hold it in place. Tapes, clips, there's a bunch of things that uh, we get to use. Clips we have to be careful of because the patient already has a wound. They need wound care, which means it's not healing well. Do I really need more sharp objects near the skin that's already got these problems with it? All right, once that's all done, now I can step back and I can doff my PPE appropriately. All right. Um, did I mess anything up? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, 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 there was uh one on the gauze that I wrapped over. I wouldn't want to do that. So we would, you know, it's going to take some time to get all of that well. So, yep. Remember, if you're here, you're going to have lots of choices. We just have a certain size eight wrap and a certain right. size gauze. So, There'll be some choices to be made in that when you're in a facility that does that. All yeah, time. and and with the documentation, it's going to say we used an eight inch rat. Like it, it should guide us that way. Um, all right. So those are the basic steps I'd like to start working on for the next. It's going to take us around forty five minutes or so to at least get a few reps in. Now, what's nice is the next person's ready to go. So the next person can then do the steps from what would be the start all the way through. Okay. All right. Any questions? Yeah. Maybe I missed You said that you would want to go against yourself when you're having. Yep. Did you just do that to show us? Or? I don't think I did. We're always unrolling on the patient. So we're always. What did I just do? Uh oh. So we're we're always unrolling on the patient that way, not going like that. It makes a huge difference. It's yeah. Yeah. Um now from here we would want to unroll it, take the take everything off, and then start unrolling it on the patient. That'll make your next steps easier too. And oh and soils, soils, the ace wraps don't get saved. Right, right. Yeah. Yep. So, All right, so I want to get the hands-on stuff done today. We'll look at all of the details Thursday, but I think we can handle this for today, okay? All right, let's give it a shot. <laughs> 